What's good? You already know where it is, man. It's the Vile Sports Podcast, the most dangerous goddamn sports podcast hitting the waves yeah. 2021. We are in the building saying, man, oh, God, Vic on the mic, man. What's good, fellas? We're in the building after playoff weekend. Got a lot to talk about today. Yeah. But before we mm-hmm. get to the proceedings this evening, what's good, fellas? Ah, oh, man. It feels good to be in the building today, the Viral Sports Podcast. Your boys is here. And we got some breaking news for all the family out there listening on YouTube or on iTunes or wherever the hell you're listening at today. Doug Peterson Uh-oh. is out as the Philadelphia Ooh. Eagles head coach. We're going to break that down, dissect that, unpack that today. And, um, yeah, we got, that's that's going to be a long conversation. So get ready for that one. Also, we're going to be talking about the playoffs. Last week, some teams are out. The new bracket is in, set for next week. We're going to talk about the past games and talk about who we think is going to win the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. And there's been a lot of rumbling since we did our last show about Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson. It appears that he may be traded very, very soon. So we want to give you the destination that they're talking about right now and talk about whether he should be traded or not, man. We in here, baby. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. So. I was really excited to come in here and talk about my squad, man, and how proud I was with him. But I was sitting there watching some NFL sports. Right. And I checked out, and I tend to y'all picture of Doug Peterson being let go of the Philadelphia Eagles. I probably saw it right live as it was happening. I yeah. Was, I don't want to say I was the first one, but I damn sure saw it breaking. What do you think, man? Let's, let's get right to it. We know that you guys are both diehard Birds fans. Um, definitely want to hear what you think. I got my thoughts, but I want to hear y'all first. Go ahead. Oh, man. I, you know, I, I've listened to a few guys. I think Jeff Mocher and Adam Kaplan, um, pretty much NFL insiders, and they deal specifically with the Eagles, and they were saying um, the first meeting that Doug Peterson and Jeff Lurie had didn't go so well, and they said one of the main reasons was because they wanted to see that Doug Peterson had a clear plan on you know moving the Eagles uh, franchise forward, and they were saying the guy's name, which his name is Press Taylor. He's been the uh, quarterback coach for the last one or two years. And um, immediately when that name came up, um, a lot of people kind of, you know, rolling their eyes at it. And apparently Jeffrey Lloyd felt the same way because this guy was the quarterback's coach. And he said that Doug Peterson was now trying to take him and have him fill the vacancy at offensive coordinator. So sitting there at the top if you're Jeffrey Lurie and your quarter and your coach comes to you and his plan is not really aligning with your plan or his plan doesn't look like it's making any sense you're going to get rid of him um he did great i think for the franchise you know bringing us our first super bowl ever in 2017 but i think his time has ran its course with the talent that this team had cuz remember last year we was talking about like uh the giants Washington football team in Dallas all had new coaches. The yeah. Eagles were bringing back their coaching staff. So it should have been a little bit easier for us to maintain um, the lead in this division. We totally failed at that. He totally mismanaged the team this year. Uh, I'm not going to be like other people and blame Carson Wentz on him because at the end of the day, he may have a little bit of blame in it with play calling, but at the end of the day, when you break down the film, Carson's staring down the receiver and he's wide open. He wouldn't throw the ball. I don't know how you can equate that to bad coaching at the end of the day. The, the, uh, the scheming and the play calling probably got a little bit dated, I think. But um, I'm 50-50, honestly, on them letting him go. Because I'm thinking, I'm like, I think maybe with the right tools that he could have turned this thing around. He did get us a Super Bowl, so maybe he deserves a little bit more. But I'm not Jeffrey Lurie. It's not my team. And he made what he thought was the best decision for the Philadelphia Eagles. And um, I'm going to ride with him on that. As a mm-hmm. fan on the outside looking in, it looks like because let me first off when it look when when you guys hired Doug Peterson, I laughed and I rejoiced as a Washington football team fan, <laughs> Redskins fan at the time because <laughs> he was ass as a quarterback, <laughs> and I didn't know him sitting behind Andy Reid at the time what he was really doing. Now, I took that all for granted, and I was excited because I thought y'all would be in a shitter. And he went took the team to the Super Bowl and did the absolute impossible. Not only winning the Super Bowl for the first time in Philadelphia history, but beating Tom Brady and the New yeah. England Patriots to do it with a backup quarterback and all the odds stacked against him. He went out there and did it, got a statue in front of uh, the link, and you would think that this dude was going to be there for all times. And then you see them sign a huge quarterback deal with Carson Wentz a year ago, and then he shits up the joint, and you got the fan base in Philadelphia that are like a fan base. No other. Me and my son were talking today, and he's like, Dad, craziest fans of football. It's Philly, and it's who else? And I'm thinking, I'm like, maybe the Raiders. 
New back York, when they yeah. were in Oakland, maybe right. New York, but it ain't many. I'm not saying that they don't wild out every place, but right. it's certain places, maybe Buffalo, that they don't fuck around at. Philly's one of them places. So we already know we were talking about it. If they were in the stands, what not only Carson Wentz would have heard, Peterson, the whole goddamn ride receiving core, everybody would have got it out there if you guys were in the stands. But I think that this was a play, oh, God, Vic, and they just put the line down to saying it's either Carson or it's Doug. Yeah. And they chose who they had their money in, and they chose the quarterback. So I said to you, I texted to you immediately, I said, they're going to grab a coach who is Carson-friendly. And I know you really didn't like that because Carson should be balling. But the fact of the matter is, I think they're going to go ahead and try to coddle him some more and get a coach that fucks with Wentz, man. But how, what do you mean by a coach that fucks with Wentz? Because everybody's Dick Rod and Frank Wright. The only reason the Eagles won because of Frank Wright. Frank Wright. You know, but he's in Indianapolis, so what do you mean when you say a Carson Wentz type coach? Because Doug Peterson should have been a Carson Wentz type coach. I mm-hmm. think somebody that believes that they can fix what was broken in Carson Wentz you. this year. Got you. Somebody that believes in his talent, somebody that hasn't written Carson Wentz off, and somebody that thinks that with Carson Wentz they can still be competitive and win a Super Bowl. I think right. that there are people out there that are going to have that resume, and I think because they fired – and I'm, I'm shocked as shit that Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson even have a frail relationship. I know. I thought up until this point everything was Gucci with them two, and come to find out it wasn't. I'm curious to find out when Sam, all man, that I got, I got I got to push back a little bit, man, because okay. it's like – not even at you, but just the whole fact that somebody needing to fucking fix somebody. This dude right. is getting paid a hundred yeah. fucking million dollars. Right. And he needs like a one coach. He needs this person that's going to fix him. Fix your fucking self, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of people coddling this dude, like you say. I'm tired of people giving him all the excuses. In my opinion, you uh, Doug Peterson might be a little scapegoat for Carson. Because the, and the reason why it's true that they picked the side is because they were saying, oh, you know, um, the reports were coming out that his relationship was fractured, you know, with um, Doug Peterson. And I think I know why is because they benched his fucking ass. He when he, sh- he deserved it. Deserved. He deserved it. You can't stink it up like he did for fucking 12 games and expect to keep on playing. So, yeah, it's a lot going on, man, behind the scenes in the organization. And, and it's ugly, but... I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully the next coach can, can um, you know, fix this thing. But Vic, what's your thoughts on this, man? Um, I didn't think it was gonna happen this soon. Mm-hmm. I knew, I had a feeling in England it was gonna happen, mm-hmm. but this soon, it truly goes to say that the Eagles chose, or not, I don't only say the Eagles because the Eagles includes the fans as well. Right. But the Eagles chose Carson Wentz over Doug Peterson. Mm. And you would you agree with that? Like I, like you said, I'm fifty fifty with it. Like I don't like I don't like that Carson had that power to say that his um relationship with Doug Peterson was fractured and they got rid of Doug Peterson in this season. When I don't believe it was Doug Peterson's fault. There was a lot of things going on and Carson Wentz really shitted on the Eagles field. Yeah. But <laughs> I think who gets hurt in this situation the most and I, I want to get y'all opinions on, especially you, oh God, is Jalen Hurts. I think that because you got a, a coach. I mean, you got a GM in, oh, I don't know what, what, I don't even know what the fuck his role is in, in the Eagles. He's is he like, a GM or yeah. he's like, hey, he's he called him GM. Howie Roseman, he picked him, so he's not going anywhere yet. But you got a, a quarterback, a coach that's going to be coming in. And we don't know if he's a Jalen Hurts guy. Jalen Hurts was 50 50 coming out of the draft. I was somebody that loved him. I think that you guys watching him the last couple of games grown to really see that the kid has potential in this league and can ball in this league. Um, and I think that he'll be able to compete, but because they're going to bring in somebody specifically tailored to Carson, in my opinion, I think that Carson's going to get a little bit of an edge, even if it's not deservingly so. I think it's going to cause a little bit of, of, a, of a... You know what's going to happen, though, Sam? Friction in, in, in the locker room. It's kind, it, it's, uh, I could say it's almost a win-win because either way, I don't care who you bring in as a coach, Carson has one more chance, organization-wise. If he comes out, he don't have the fucking leeway like a rookie has. This is year six, damn it. So you got to come out balling from day one. You can't go 03, 04. You got to come out balling this year or Jalen Hurts is going to be the quarterback. I don't give a damn. who. It has to be that way because, like you say, the fans are going to start to go crazy. His leash is like this short with the Philadelphia Eagles this year. So he better... He better come out playing. They better make the right choice here. But either way, it's a win-win because 
All right, if Carson don't work out, then you know, all right, he's not the guy. We're moving on. We're moving his show to Jalen. Now we could trade him. And what makes it even better, you got to trade that line next year. So if he's thinking it up, the Eagles got to pull the trigger and get rid of him and dump him. They got rid of um, they got rid of Peterson. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, y'all stink up to join next year. Carson's terrible. Y'all get another questionable draft. When is the time to get rid of Roseman? When is the time for Lurie to pull that plug? Man, you know, Howie, you know, a lot. he won the Super Bowl. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, it's been three, four years mm-hmm. now, but he got it done. But people are looking at his body of work, and they're saying that it ain't really been adding up as far as, like, the talents, the people that we miss. And everybody misses, yeah, but, everybody. you know, um, the talent, you're looking at, like, guys like, all right, who's the top talent on the Eagles, young talent? Um, Miles Sanders, mm-hmm. Goddard. Mm-hmm. Then who kind of else after that? You could say, all right, they could be probably Pro Bowls or superstars. There ain't other, many others. You got to have more names, big names on your uh, team. So this next year, the draft is going to be big. Free agency is going to be big. Now we got a we got a vacancy for a new coach. Now it's you know so, like my man Vic said, we in middle of rebuilding one on one in Philadelphia once again. Mm-hmm. And I want to go back to your previous question with, um, with Jalen Hurts. Mm-hmm. I think Jalen Hurts is going to be good regardless. I don't think he needs a coach. I don't think he needs a coach to, um, like you said, what Carson wants, coddle him because he's gonna get it done himself. Because we've seen him do it. Even he's not. He doesn't. He doesn't need all that. Like we've seen him do it in college. We've seen him do it in um, the NFL. And he's making a name for himself, not only with the fans but also with his teammates and other football players. So if Car- if Carson Wentz needs a coach to coddle him. Then bring him in. But if he doesn't get it done this year, then he's gone. I think that um, you make a good point. Jalen Hurts, unlike I, I gave that in comparison because I've been around. I've been a fan of terrible organizations with terrible coaching staffs <laughs> that brought in quarterbacks with potential and ruined them. Um, but also a lot of those quarterbacks that were ruined had maturity questions and issues as well. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't have that with Jalen Hurts. I never did. I watched him lose his job in Alabama, take it on the chin, work even harder in Oklahoma, take them to the playoffs. Damn near beat, I believe, Alabama in the playoff game. He did his thing. He's a mature kid, man. He's going to win regardless. Man. Do, do you guys think, sorry to interrupt you, that yeah, Carson Wentz is going to rise to the challenge? Because you, among the excuses that you hear in Philadelphia is they should have never drafted Jalen. And they got to get rid of Jalen because Carson is playing bad because this dude is breathing down his neck. And I'll say that. I'll say this to that. Look at Aaron Rodgers. You know what I mean? When they, um, the Packers drafted my man Jordan Love. And f- even forget all that at the end of the day because, look, if you're a competitor and you're a leader and you're a winner, I don't give a fuck who's over my shoulder. Mm-hmm. You don't give a fuck who's over your shoulder. You go in there and you balling out. So yes, they, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. They keep giving this dude so many different excuses. It's make or break for Carson Wentz this year no matter the circumstance. But do you guys think that Carson is going to rise to the challenge or you think he's going to fold? I think he's going to fold. He watched a man take his, his family... Like you, like we said a while ago, to the to Damn. Disneyland. He watched the family. He watched his family go to Disneyland without him while he was eating. I don't know potato chips and playing with his dog. Wow. Um. And oh, and then oh, and then this season, he shitted on the field. Literally took a shit on the field. Twelve multiple games. times. And after and after they took him out because of his numerous shits, he started <laughs> whining about. He's, he started whining about yeah. what he what he did. He did it to himself. Yeah, so true, true. I don't think he's gonna rise to the plate. It's all I think it all it's all it's all mental with him. Like yeah. going like going in and seeing a statue of Nick Foles who's not even there anymore. I think they're about to take them shits down. Yeah, it might. <laughs> <laughs> As a Washington football team fan, after winning the division, even though I'll be <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> even though I'll be at seven and nine. I'm very, very excited to see Carson Wentz back because there's no doubt in my mind he is going to be terrible next year. He's going, he's a listen. It's it's a different age. And back in 2017, Carson was a different quarterback. He's running. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. strong. Yeah. He's throwing off the run. He has making defenses not only think about the run but the pass, and then the quarterback running. He ain't that no more. Nope. He's a sitting fucking duck. And these lines, defensive lines, he's going to be playing not in that division, faster but just, faster. Uh, they're getting faster and fucking faster. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's going to be very interesting. Y'all are in a rebuilding year. Um, I don't think, like you said, the leash is short. He got a game and a half. Yep. He stinks it up game one and gets another half. He's out. He's yep. fucking out. And that's his career with the Eagles. And um, we'll see. This this offseason, yeah. 
the way we got it shaped up and the season's not even over yet. It's going to be one of the most entertaining off seasons we've ever seen, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, potential. I'm sure they're going to be throwing potential names for uh, head coaches, offensive coordinators. One thing I do want to see is a lot of brothers out there. Yeah. I want to see Deuce Daly get an opportunity. Me too. Oh, he, I think at this point, you got to, I mean, I don't want him just to have an interview for the formality of it. He needs to be seriously considered as the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles moving forward because mm-hmm. of his leadership. You know, uh, you ever heard? I don't know if y'all sat and listened to this dude talk, man. The dude is a hundred percent natural leader and a motivator. So I, I want to see Deuce get the opportunity, man. And I think that him, you know, Eric Bieniemy and another guy out there, um, they're saying Lincoln Riley, but I forget the guy's name. Um, the, the Bills' offensive coordinator okay. should, you know, should be really considered for the Eagles' head coaching job. What do you guys think about the next head coach? Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I really think that it should be a um, a brother. I think it's going to be somebody who believes, who can make Lori believe they can win a Super Bowl with Carson Wentz. So if one of them brothers think that, I think that it's going to happen. Um, I really want to see them get another chance, but I solely based, think it's based off of Carson. But when you look at the openings, the seven openings now, Damn. I think that the Jaguars is a very appealing look at number one because of the little bit of talent they have or because of the draft picks, the cat room, yeah. and the number one pick. And the location, no tax and shit. I think that uh, Jacksonville's a good yeah. one. Mm-hmm. I think that you got San Diego, not San Diego, but the LA Chargers with a good team oh, yeah. around them. That's yeah. a nice mm-hmm. pick. And now you got throwing Philly. You know what I'm saying? No matter how much I hate them, they've been a winning franchise the last two decades. Right. Somebody gonna be able to walk in there and think that they can turn it around quickly, faster than uh, not. So I think that's an appealing place. So I think that you're gonna see some top premier coaches get named throughout there. I do. Yeah. yeah. What you think, Vic? Um, yeah, Philly is a is a premier place. The only thing that you really have to get through is the fans. But I think that's that's gonna be easy as long as you show as long as you show that you can win. And I would like to I would love to see a brother come in and flip everything around. Like we've been a running franchise for twenty for uh, two decades, but we only have one Super Bowl. Many don't. Decades, I mean, but only, yeah, that ain't easy, the Patriots are an anomaly in this shit, man. Yeah. Six Super Bowls in twenty years. Mm-hmm. Think about that, mm-hmm. and that's the greatest of all time. So. But I mean. I would love to see a brother come in and you feel me flip the culture, and 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 give and give Carson once that not that I don't even know what to say like a battery that he needs to um to, give him to win. He got a hundred million. What the fuck else you got to give him? I know. Man, enough with this non-playoff ass team. Let's talk about the goddamn Washington <laughs> football team and the Buccaneers. Oh man. boy! <laughs> Listen, man. Playoffs this Saturday and Sunday were dope. I yeah. loved every game. I think mm-hmm. every game was competitive. If it wasn't competitive, it shocked the shit out of you. I'll start with my game. We lost 31-23. to 23. Our four-string quarterback, Taylor Heineke, came in out of Old Dominion and shocked, I believe, the fucking world. He came in there and he balled, and he gave um, a lot of answers to some questions, I think, to Dwayne Haskins, not Alex Smith. Alex is hurt, though. Alex yeah. may never be better. Alex he, is done. He, he's done. <laughs> Alex is yeah, done. He's done. He's done. <laughs> and, and, and I love Alex. I respect Alex. But yeah. when you look at what the fourth string quarterback did, all know, he known the offense real well. He was comfortable in the offense. But when you look at the check downs that we had in with Alex Smith and the fucking whatevers we had with Dwayne Haskins, did you see this kid come in and get to the second level and hit and hit and hit and move with his legs and do this? It kind of goes like, what the fuck are we watching? we never seen he's this. He's been on four different before. teams, though, and, 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 and he's probably had a little bit of – and you want to compare him to a guy like Haskins. I, I can't say the other guy because he's played before, but when you look at Haskins, I mean, he's probably doing it because he's not as comfortable as this dude. What the and fuck you going to get comfortable, bro? <laughs> you had two years. That was your team. Get comfortable. This nigga was taking math tests and living in the sister's house. I was listening to what oh, yeah. a little bit of his story. He had no business going out there and doing that against Tom Brady. And Dwayne Haskins had the team, the same team around him. McLaren was hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gibbs was hurt. You had people, Gibson was hurt, excuse me. You had people around him that was hurt, that wasn't hurt with him behind center, man. I, I just, I'm not, I'm I'm not going to beat up Haskins no more because I hear that his agent is talking to Carolina and I want to see the kid get oh, another dope. job. Oh, I want to see him get back in the league. He will, yeah. But yeah. um, I think that within loss, in the loss, I think that it kind of answered the question of, to me, we don't have to draft a quarterback right now. I heard a lot of people that saying it's a game. franchise. Well, one listen, game. Listen, one listen, game. Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I don't think the brother's the opinion. franchise quarterback. Right. But I think he bought us a year to see. I think yeah. that he bought us mm-hmm. five games to see. If he shits up the joint in five games, we have Kyle Allen in the backup. He knows it. He's not the uh, quintessential answer either but it gives us time to build a young quarterback if he's not in the draft this year he could be in the draft next year i don't think right now that we're in a position that we have to overspend 
for Deshaun Watkins as much as we would love to have him. Right, or right. Dak Prescott as much right. as we would love to have him. Let's keep the nucleus, the young core together, and get somebody young and build them up from the jump. Yeah, first mm-hmm. of all, I don't think that your quarterback of the future is on the team. Me either. In my opinion. And um, in the playoffs, man, weaknesses get exposed. And we've seen that, you know, your lack of weapons. Even Like the kid came in. He did very well, but like you said last week, it wasn't a lot of tape on him, and and I think the Buccaneers brought pressure a little bit with Todd Bowles, but I, they it just they weren't getting that pressure from those first four guys, and I was like, man, it really surprised me. Mm-hmm. But y'all line held up, and so did their line too as well, because they they did a pretty good job blocking, you know, some of y'all guys. You know, you see um, what happens when that happens. Yeah, yeah, and, and that that's kind of like the blueprint to kind of beat y'all, but um. Yeah, man, you got to take your hat off to him. I, I thought y'all was winning the game. All like, the Buccaneers ain't winning this game. Yeah. But they were just, you know, that defense was just, I thought they was going to play better than that in the playoffs. But you got to take your hat off to him, man. That's when, when you get in there, anything can happen. I know that. Uh, you know what disappointed me, and I love my defense, but it showed you the holes we have in the defense. We need mm-hmm. cornerbacks. You know what I'm saying? I know they had everybody in the goddamn green earth to defend, but we need better cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. We need a linebacker because Florette was getting four or five yards a clip because the linebackers weren't fiddling them gaps oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and lighting his ass up when we yeah. had everybody up front taken, taken up. So we, we see what we need, man, but we're young, we're upcoming, and I'm just glad that we're in a better direction, a winning environment. It smells like a winner. doesn't smell like no bullshit, and hopefully we can just kind of move from this momentum. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to Tyler Heineke, I have to, like you said, I got to take my hat off to him. I got... I hate to say it, but I got I got nothing but respect for him because we didn't I didn't see him play at all during the regular season. Who did? You know, yeah, he should have been higher up on the depth chart. Than yeah, that. he should have been higher up. You on know the depth what? Chart. He was the COVID relief John. Oh, okay. Really? okay. He wasn't even in the goddamn league. It oh, was, was Haskins, drafted. Kyle Allen, and Alex Smith. Damn. And then we went through all that, and then right after the Carolina game, no, not Carolina, the game before that, maybe Seattle. Yeah. We, no, 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 Cincinnati. Yeah. We brought him in. Oh, well, shout the out to the coaches, Ron Smart Rivera for getting them ready. Yeah, 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 man. So I mean, he deserves. Another shot. It's going to be cheap. We ain't got to pay him that much to come in there, get a full camp with the starters, and see what the kid can do. If he can go ahead and give buy us more time, let the motherfucker buy us more time on a cheaper fucking ticket. I'm with that, man. Keep that boy so we can eat him up next year. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that boy up next year. Hi, Nick. As soon as they got that film on him, it's over. Man, let's talk about some other playoff games, man. Yeah. Because outside of that, when we had some great games, we had the Rams beat the Seahawks 30 to 20. The Bears get stomped by the uh, Saints 21 to yeah. 9. Ravens came through, man. Lamar Jackson came through. Yeah. Beat up the Titans 20 to 13. We had the Bills take care of business against the Colts, albeit a very good game. I don't think any of us seen it being that close. Mm-mm. And then the Browns shocking the Steelers on Sunday night football, 48 to 37. Vic, I'm gonna shoot it to you, big dog. What was your most memorable moment of talk playoff about weekend? Two, two, two most memorable moments. Lamar Jackson getting his first playoff win. Fact. Love seeing that brother win. Um and the Browns shit and taking taking over against the Steelers. So I wanna talk about I wanna talk about my man Lamar first. Yeah. He came in he came in, he um we all know all the rumors, the social media was going crazy, the Titans were at his throat. But he came in and he brought his team to win behind what he does best, run the ball. And and the defense was holding up I did not think they were gonna stop Henry that Henry like that. Probably. Yeah, yeah, me neither. That was I didn't. Dope. What what do you have? He had like forty. He had like forty, 40 yards. Something he got shut down. Shut yep. down. Anything under a hundred, you shut him. That's that's a shut down. You say he choked. Mm-hmm. That's a choke, kind of. I want to say he choked. He just got to be able to get them. You you we got two thousand fucking yards in the biggest game in your career. You get forty. I get it. The offensive line, the stat, the defense scheming, but nah, nigga, I'm the best running back in the league. I'm getting mine. That's true. Emma Smith was getting his. Barry mm-hmm. was getting his. He deserved the criticism. He does. He's an he's absolute fucking beast, but we would have gave it to LaDainian. We would have gave it to Terrell Davis. Yeah. Any 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 running back that's the man during that season, he has to produce. He's almost like the quarterback, so to speak. You get the rock, no matter what's going on in front of you, you got to carry that rock. And they they you they shut him down. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for Lamar. Let me give you mine real quick. Yeah. Lamar, because I think, and I was I, when I was watching the game, they put like his regular season record up. The dude's a beast. He is. In a regular season, they just had this whole playoff thing hanging over his head, and that's you know, I hear me say this a lot, but the whole black quarterback thing is just the pressure is on. You know what I mean? And you get a little longer leash when you're a franchise guy like McNabb and him and Vic and other people, but that leash is shorter than others. And I think that he proved now that you know he's definitely going to be elite, is elite, and is going to be elite for years to come. So I can't wait to see. 
you know, uh, what happens. I got them going to the AFC Championship game. And really, that's my only moment. Um, and I only had no other moments because I kind of expected, you know, a lot of the thing. I ain't going to say I expected the Browns to do what they do, but they've been hot. They've been hot, and mm-hmm. I never was really big on the Steelers like that. I thought the Steelers were way overrated this year, honestly. I expected a, 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 a upset this this weekend because there's always an upset during wild card weekend. It's yep. one game that you don't expect to happen the way it happens. Happens. I was hoping it was our team, and it was close, but it ended up being that Brown Steelers game. I don't think anybody expected the Browns to go in there two weeks in a row and handle business. They were close last week mm-hmm. with the backup sense where everybody thought that the Steelers were going to come in there fully rested with the full – First team lineup and going there and handle business, and they got smoked. Um, I love what we see this weekend in this upcoming playoffs. We got the Rams against the Packers mm. on Saturday, Whew. 435, starting off playoff weekend. And then we got, oh no, excuse me, we got the Browns and the Chiefs starting off playoff weekend at 305. Mm. Then, Saturday? Saturday. Let's but, get it. And then we got Rams, Packers at uh, 435. So they're going, they're going back to back. It's going to be, no, nah, I'm bugging. I'm bugging. Y'all got to excuse me on all this. Saturday, Rams, Packers, 435. Oh, okay. Evening game, Ravens, Bills. 815. Sunday, 305. Browns, Chiefs. All right, that's cool. Evening, Buccaneers, Saints. So All we, great games, man. Let's start with the first one. The first one is the Rams and the Packers. Packers. How do you guys see this game uh, playing out? Go ahead, Vic. Knock that I off. feel like, I really feel like the Rams can take it. I feel like the Rams can take it. But the one, the one thing, the one, the only way that they're going to take it, one, is that Sam Darnold could get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Darnold. Aaron Donald, my yeah. bad, my bad. Yeah. Aaron Donald could take get pressure on that man's name. Like, <laughs> <laughs> could get pressure Donald. on uh, Aaron Rodgers. And two, if Jalen Ramsey can stop Devontae Adams. What a matchup that's going to be. God, I can't wait to see that. Those are, that's, the, those, that's the only way I can see them winning. They don't stand a chance in fucking hell in the frozen tundra. Tell them why, bro. Because nobody's going into Green Bay and winning in the fucking you know, winter time, bro. I think Trust it's been one winner in history. Right. It just ain't yeah. happening. The Giants, maybe? The Eagles, didn't we win out there, too, a did long we? time ago? In the playoffs? I don't think Remember so. Remember that year with McNabb and we threw the fucking ball shit deep to Freddie Mitchell? I don't know if that was in Green Bay. No, y'all didn't win that game. I think the game, the first time that they ever lost with the Giants, and that's the year the Giants went to the bowl. Okay. We did win that game with the Packers, didn't we? Was it in the playoffs? I think so. I'm going to look it up. We got to look it up. But anyway, anyway, um, I just don't see them going in there doing it, man. I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, well, they're a warm weather team. Definitely. They used to be a dome team, the Rams, but they're a warm weather team. I don't trust in Jared Goff. I don't trust that team. Now, Jalen Ramsey is a beast, but I think my man, uh, Avante, is going to get the best of him that day. It's Green Bay, dog. Like, Green Bay is going to the fucking Super Bowl this year out of the NFC. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Yeah, I I think Aaron Rodgers is a man on a mission. You brought him up earlier in the show when they went and uh, drafted a quarterback. And Jordan Love and everybody was hot about it, asking if Aaron Rodgers was done. And we ain't heard that brother's name, Jordan Love. Since they drafted his ass, because Aaron Rodgers went possessed. Yep. He's the MVP of this league, and I think he's going to lead the, um, the Green Bay Packers um, to the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. I think they're on a mission. The one thing that does worry me, because I kind of go on playoff history, and throughout history, you've always seen one bye team kind of stink up the joint and get shocked. Ain't gonna and when be you look at an L.A. Rams team that's depleted with Jared Goff hurt, and I really don't buy Jared Goff anyway. I'm not a Jared Goff guy. you got Aaron Donald, who's hurt. Potentially broken ribs. I think at best he has broken ribs. He's going to play. He's going to gut it out because he's an absolute warrior. But he's going to be hobbled. And I think that the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field at home on a mission is just going to be too much. And I think that whoever they play in the NFC Championship, it's going to be the same fate, man. I think yeah. they're on a mission. I really mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Now bringing up now bringing up what you said um, previously um, that the, a buy team always thinks it up. Do you believe that the Chiefs are going to stick it up against the Browns? They're going to bust the Browns' ass. They're gonna bust the Browns' ass. You tr- watch. You watch me. Like twenty year old pussy. They gonna yeah. They gonna bust their ass, ass. They 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 coming with a different pedigree, coach and quarterback. My man Tyreek. They can't be denied. They're going to the Super Bowl of the AFC unless mm-hmm. unless Baltimore has something to say about it. In my opinion, what's the, what's the next game, Vic? Um, in my uh the, the Saints versus the Buccaneers. In my opinion, <laughs> I think that's gonna be the most competitive game. Bucks suck. Out of the entire they game, suck. the defense sucks. The offense is firing on all cylinders, though. They all right. They all right. I wasn't impressed, man. I really wasn't. Nope. Got to be honest. I wasn't even. They they were beatable. 
And when you look at the Saints, the Saints have a better defense because the Saints got a better back half than Washington does. They got mm-hmm. better linebackers. They got a better secondary. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be able to slow down those receivers just enough to get to Brady. That's what we could not do. I told you, in that game, Chase Young and Montez Sweat were going to be non-factors because they got to go up in the edge, and we were looking at an absolute master in the pocket. It's going to have to be Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen getting up in the middle and getting at his feet. You got um my man. Who's my man in um Cameron uh Cameron uh Fuller? Nah, who's my man in um in the the, the Saints, the defensive lineman for the Saints? Oh, I know you're talking about. Damn, Cameron Jordan. Yeah, there you go. There Absolute you go. monster. Yeah. He's gonna get up and get in Brady's face and make him real uncomfortable. And I think yep. that Breeze and the New Orleans Saints will beat Brady yeah, and the yeah. Bucks for the third time in a row. Yeah. Think about that. We going. We got legends in there. We got six Super Bowls against one Super Bowl. I think that they're both one two in passing yards. And Brady beats him three years in a row. Or, or Breeze beats him three years or three games straight in a year to retire. Wow. Yep, it's gonna happen. Now we got the Bills. Who are the Bills playing again? The Ravens. Oh, fucking Ravens. Lamar all day. Bill. It comes to an end. The buck stops here. The bill stops here. This weekend, Lamar, man, I love what I've seen out of him. Because he took matters into his own hands. He's not waiting around no more. Stop sticking into the stigma. Okay, if it ain't nothing there, take it to the fucking house, man. I think he put the team on his back. I got Baltimore winning that one. And a close one, maybe a six-point spread or something like that. But I think they win that game. Oh, God, um, I agree with you. I got Baltimore gutting this out and beating the Buffalo Bills. I love what Buffalo has going on. I think they're going to be the front runners in the AFC East for a long time. I think that Miami has going to have something to say about that, but it'll be the Buffalo Bills world and everyone else will be living in it. But this year, this year with my man Lamar Jackson on a mission, I want to see this brother go against Mahomes in the championship. I think he deserves it. Yeah. I don't think it's it's fair that we get criticism of a kid who was fifth picked in the draft as quarterbacks in his draft, mm-hmm. wasn't uh, 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 picked to really do anything in, in, a, in a league, and came off an MVP, and winning records both years. He's been in the league in his third year, and we're talking about him not winning a playoff game. Some of them quarterbacks ain't even been in the playoffs. Yeah. We'll talk about Real that talk. later. Yeah. He's a beast. He deserves it. I see him going and taking care of business against Josh Allen, somebody in his quarterback class that got picked before him. And taking care of Ben. That's crazy. He did? He did. He did. Holy Out of Wyoming. shit. He did. Sure did. And I'm also looking at the stats. Oh, God, you are correct. Philadelphia beat the uh, uh, they beat the Packers in the 2003 playoffs, but it was at home. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's at home. That, uh, I, remember, I remember that game. I don't see. I'm looking at the win-loss record, and I'm looking at the L's, and I don't see one at home in the playoffs. <laughs> They don't win. And the Rams ain't the team to do that, bro. It is a cold. It is a cold. Winning New York. Dude. New York. New York in 2011 is the only team to do it, 20 to 37. That's it. They lost once. Mm. Damn. All right. The next game, we're going to go down to the. Um, we got everything except for the Browns and the Chiefs, right? Browns. Are, yeah, we said no, the Browns are going to beat them like no, new the pussies. kicking their ass. Okay. Saints Bucks. So we got everybody. We cover everybody. Yeah. Right Indeed. What we got now, man? Sean Watson. Watson, man. We got to talk about that. Now, before you came in, Vic, you was telling me some news about Deshaun may be getting dealt to the Miami Dolphins. Mm hmm. Well, talk about it, brother. What's up? Um, I would actually, I would like that. I would like it. Um, but it it's conf- it's it would be co- it would be a confusing it would be confusing because um, he would have to go after he would go against Tua when it comes to that. So um, I don't think it it'll it'll be a good move for him with everything that they have, the core that they have, um, the coach that they have, and it would just be a good fit for him. But it brings the question like Whoa. they have Tua. Whoa. What's, what's going on, Sam? All right, well, I was trying to find some backstory on Deshaun Watson as you were talking, right? And I don't know TotalProSports.com. I've never heard of him. Um, but he has a report out as of January 11th saying the Philadelphia Eagles have a pretty cut-and-dry situation at quarterback as the team made it since 2020. I'm um, trying to figure out. Pro Football floated the idea today that Deshaun Watson could be traded They're, they have something with the eagles here but i don't know too much about what's going on so i'll leave that for what it is right um but anyway you got the strong watson top five quarterback in the nfl um with a franchise that went four and 12 this year traded away his best asset at quarterback didn't give him much help was promised that he would be um involved within the conversation of hiring the new gm he didn't want to help pick because obviously that's a behind the scenes and in a, in a, in a um front office decision but he just wanted to be in a loop of what was going on with mm-hmm. his team mm-hmm. and they didn't leave him in a loop they pretty much just shit on him told him to take his money 
grab the football, throw it, and shut the fuck up. And he's tired. He's tired. They were talking about rumors of him going to the Dolphins for Tua. Other destinations were the New England Patriots, Steelers, Colts, Raiders, Broncos, Washington, Philly, Chicago, Detroit, Damn, New Orleans. Teams. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, they pretty much said there's about four organizations that don't have to worry about it outside of that. If you got it, go get it for Deshaun Watson. Right. Um, but he does have a no-trade clause, so he pretty much ultimately decides where he goes. They can't just trade him any old where. We've heard the Dolphins. Um, we've heard Frisco. And right. I think we've heard one other team. But what do you think about this whole thing? You've got a quarterback who's the top five in the league. He hasn't even hit his prime yet. Right. And he's being disrespected the way he is, and we're going to have a potential move and a shakeup in the NFL wherever he goes. What do you think about nah, this? Nah, I think you laid it out perfectly when you said, you know, taking away hop, you know, promise him different things and breaking that. I think once the trust is broken, you have every opportunity to ask for a way out. But the thing is with Deshaun, you just have to pick the right situation. Now, I think Miami might be favorable. I think I like the way Miami is trending upwards. You talk about the black GM, the black coach, the culture that's being rebuilt to Miami now. It's now, you know, look like it's turning the, um, the door um, or the corner, I should say, to being a winning organization. But um, I just can't see him there for some reason. Maybe it's just me. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, but I mean, they, they have a shot now. You were talking about the Eagles. And um, I guess trading Carson Wentz. I did see that. I think I heard little rumblings about that. I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it. I mean, if you if you had if you sat me down and said Deshaun or Carson, I'm picking Deshaun a thousand times out of a thousand times. But I, I like Jalen, man. I think you know um, he's going to be the future for the Eagles, and I don't think we need to go ahead and switch a quarterback like that. But hey, man, if you got the opportunity to do that, and if Texans are stupid enough. To take Carson Wentz, let's do it. Texas would have to be stupid enough to do something stupid enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the only reason from a Washington perspective, as much as I would love them, you think about it. And, and any fan out there for the Washington football team that's thinking this is a great idea, slow your roll. Because what are we going to have to give up? Yeah. And what are we going to have to take on? We got a great nucleus on defense, and they're going to want one of those defensive linemen. We know we're not giving up Chase. So who are we going to give up, Montez? Okay. Do you want to yeah. do that? We're going to have to give up draft stock, so we're not going to be able to replace Montez this year. And then are we going to be able to put the pieces around him to mm -hmm. afford that as well as pay Chase Young, uh, McLaren, and all these other young little weapons that we need? Oh, yeah, them paydays is coming. They're coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got to play this smart. As much as you would love to show Watson, number five quarterback in the league, I think it's risk over reward. I don't think it's a move we need to make right now mm -hmm. when you look at Miami. When they got draft capital, they got two draft picks in the first round. They got a young quarterback in Tua who could possibly be moved. Yeah, they like him, right. but they don't know if he's the answer. They know Deshaun is the answer before his prime, and they put him right smack dab in that, that lineup. He's making some noise in the AFC East. It makes mm -hmm. a lot more sense. San Francisco makes sense. They got some draft capital, and I would hate to see him out there in 49er land. Fuck that. But, but no, nah, that's, that's a good point. You say the AFC East because what are the other teams that really going to compete? He, he's at least going to be in the playoffs every year. Goddamn right. In a favorable situation. Yeah, yeah. man. So we'll see. They, they, now, I know the GM and the, and the coach came out and said that they love Tua, but you always going to hear this because they got to let what's going on behind the scenes happen behind the scenes before they pull the trigger. So I wouldn't care to put too much stock into that. I think that um, if Deshaun Watson wants to go to Miami, He'll be in Miami. Yeah, of course. And um, I want to bring this to your attention um, from uh, Twitter. So it's about Deshaun Watson. And this is Mike Greenberg saying this. Deshaun Watson had the best season that no one will ever remember in the history of the NFL. It's a fact. He went 4-12. He right. led the, mm -hmm. led the uh, NFL in passing. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Clark also said this. Somehow Deshaun Watson keeps these dudes in games. It's phenomenal to watch. Every week, his defense does its best to create insurmountable leads, and he makes it a game. He deals with the same hell and high water. My auntie says she had to deal with walking to school every day. Mm. He had great point. He was had four thousand eight hundred twenty-three yards, thirty-three touchdowns, seven mm -hmm. interceptions, and they went four and twelve. Four thousand what? Four thousand eight hundred twenty-three. God yards. damn! He had the this year with no receivers, receivers, with no one. No line. He was probably one of the most hit quarterbacks in the league. Mm -hmm. Bring him to Philly then, shit. 33 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> He's an absolute fucking problem. Yeah. And I would love him in D.C., but I just don't want to give up what we'd have to give up. He'd, he'd be in no different situation than he in fucking Houston out there. Well, shit, y'all in better cap situation than us. They'd be like 60 million under the cap. Mm -hmm. Or over, I just hate the cap. So, we got a lot of guys we got to let go. Yeah. So, it is what it is. It is, yeah, it is what it is. You don't get these one time in a lifetime talents without giving up something unless you draft them. So that's why Houston's stupid. So apparently Dan Orlowski, um, there's a video on ESPN. It said what Doug Peterson's firing means for Philadelphia Carson Wentz, and it says uh, 
um, Arlovsky pressures on went pressure on Wentz after Peterson firing. So it was kind of alluding to the same thing we were saying now. Like it's on. I can't wait to listen to this because it's all on you now, Wentz. Man. He's pro. He's pro uh, Wentz too. And Dan Arlovsky. I know. Beast. He's all a all fucking. Wentz. I love Dan yeah. Arlovsky, man. I love yeah. his take on shit. Yep. He knows football. He's a beast, man. He knows yep. what he's doing. Yep. So. so definitely respect those guys. A lot of other guys will respect too, man, in this sports arena. But yeah, man, another episode of the Viral Sports Podcast. Talk, 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 talk. The books. Make sure you guys subscribe on YouTube. Share this video. You know what I mean? And definitely be sure to check us out very, very soon on your favorite podcast outlet, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play will be on that very soon. But right now you can check your boys out on youtube share the video like the video let a friend know to check out the viral sports podcast we coming i cannot wait to next football season but we're going to keep you guys covered all year long the draft nba all the way up to the next nfl season man we're here to stay that's your boy sam man i'm your brother old guy we got victor over there behind the mics over and out Peace. peace